At the end of World War II, the uneasy alliance between Stalin, Truman, and Churchill gave way to the fear of the spreading Red Menace. Korea became a microcosm of the struggle between democracy and communism taking place around the world. After World War II, Korea, which had previously been part of the Japanese Empire, fell into the hands of the U.S. and Russia. The two powers decided to split Korea across the 38th parallel. The anti-communist dictator, Syngman Rhee, led the lower half of Korea with the reluctant support of the U.S. Above the 38th parallel, Kim Il-sung led North Korea with the slightly more enthusiastic support of Soviet Russia. Neither of the dictators were content with their share of the land, and even before the Korean War started, there were skirmishes between North and South Korea, resulting in 10,000 deaths. When North Korea finally received China's promise of support in a war, they started the war by crossing the 38th parallel and invading South Korea. In response to North Korea's attack, President Truman announced to America that if we let Korea down, the Soviets will keep right on going and swallow up one place after another. Shortly following President Truman's speech, the UN Security Council authorized war with North Korea on July 7, 1950, and the Cold War quickly turned from cold to hot. Sidney Grossman was drafted into the war at the age of 21, like many other young men in America. He attended his base training at Camp Gordon in Georgia before flying to Seattle and eventually leaving the homeland and taking a ship to see all three. After arriving in Korea, he took a train up to the front line, and like many of the soldiers, he was woefully unprepared for the extreme winters and humid and muddy summers. You go up to the front lines, and Korea was like a mud hole. I remember getting off the train and ending up in mud, probably around uh, six inches deep. Sidney Grossman would prove to be a very lucky soldier. He would rise to the rank of corporal in the 2nd Division Heavy Marauder Regiment before leaving the Army. While in the Army, he worked as a forward responder. His job was to record the enemy's position and then radio back to the infantry for coordinates so they could aim the mortars. While working as a forward responder, he would experience a number of close calls. A radio operator just sitting beside me, incoming mortar landed on his, on the other side. I was on one side, the mortar came in on his other side, landed, and the shrapnel killed him. He actually protected me. His body got all the shrapnel, and I got nothing. Sidney Grossman would go on to serve in three major battles, the most notable of which was Heartbreak Ridge. This is the story of a mound of earth in Korea. The GIs who first fought on its slopes called it Heartbreak Ridge. Never was a place more aptly named, and the name stuck. We held Heartbreak Ridge once. We won it after long and bitter battle. But the Reds threw wave after suicide wave at it and drove us off. Now we're hitting that ridge with everything we've got. It was a battle which one could never forget. It was a heartbreak. I had to give supporting fire to the uh, inf infantry soldier. Supporting fire is giving them spoke protection as they go after the North Koreans and then giving them supporting fire once they're in range. After taking back Heartbreak Ridge, Sidney Grossman would continue on to his final mission as a soldier on the front line. Under the pitch black night, Sidney Grossman was ordered with 16 of the soldiers to hike through the mountains and follow a river across the 38th parallel. His mission was to go behind the enemy lines and find the enemy's position without being discovered. As the 16 men turned the bend of the river, they were ambushed. There were 16 of us. I was probably the 15th guy in the patrol, and my radio operator was the 16th guy, and number one was the lieutenant. And as we went around the bend, 
the North Koreans spotted us and we walked into an ambush. They were on both sides of the river and right away they uh, fired upon us. I would say the lieutenant with around eight or uh, maybe even more uh, were automatically killed right away. Sidney Grossman was the lone survivor of the ambush. He crawled two miles back to his base camp under the pitch black night. He hid in between the mounds of the rice field as he crawled back to make sure he wasn't followed by the enemy soldiers. All I had with me was a compass that I was able to use to get back to my lines. The time I got back to my lines, I couldn't stand up and walk. My feet gave out, but they saw me, my, the guys in my company saw me out there, and they went out and they grabbed me by the arms and they brought me back to the colonel who of course interrogated me, wanted to know everything that happened. And at that time, they took me off the line permanently. They said, you had enough. The ambush, Sidney Grossman was repositioned as a survey sergeant and told he earned enough points to return back home. Upon leaving the army, he received this plaque and the Korean Medal of Service to commemorate his time as a soldier. Not long after he arrived back home, he would marry Norma Grossman and have four children. Meanwhile, the Korean War ended in a stalemate with an armistice agreement on July 25, 1953. While there was little to no change in territory, the war was deemed a success since the communists had been contained. The soldiers who had been away from their families for far too long were finally able to return home. The U.S. lost approximately 50,000 soldiers, making Sidney Grossman one of the few soldiers who returned home alive and uninjured. Sadly, conflict between North Korea and South Korea still exists today.